Okay, is it working? Oh no, 9% battery. Better change that now. Now that's better, 100% battery, I'm ready to film and today I'm going to talk about hard drives again, this time which drives do I take with me on my travels and still have backups. A couple days ago I talked about this little drive especially and also about why there's velcro on the back of this drive. Today I'm mainly going to talk about why I have four drives and how I back them up and which kind of setup I would suggest you to have if you want to travel with a lot of data storage but still be safe and not lose anything. And obviously one of the most important things with data storage safety is duplicating your files but that can be really a pain and there are programs that are really really helpful and in this video I'm going to talk about Time Machine and Carbon Copy Cleaner and also a free alternative to Carbon Copy Cleaner. In general I would say I use three drives the most. The Mac internal with 500 gigabytes, then I have the SD card slot where I have 128 gigabytes and then I use this SSD external drive which I have velcroed to the back of my computer so I almost always use it, especially for active photo and video projects because this is super fast and it is 500 gigabytes if I would have the coin, I would buy the 2 terabytes version, but that's around 700 euros, and right now that's just too much. But what about these other drives? There's this drive, then there's those drives. Well, for one, I have these two drives, which are basically identical mirrors of another. So this is a 2 terabyte drive, and this is the same 2 terabyte drive, and as you can see on the writing here, or maybe you can, but this here is the copy of this drive. So basically, I always bring one of these with me and the other one stays for example in a hotel, hostel or wherever. So if I lose one of these I still have the data and in general I copy them once per week, synchronize what's on there. And that's why I use Carbon Copy Cleaner which I'm going to show you later. In addition to that I have this little drive and in my case this is a one terabyte drive and this is used in half basically, so I cut this in half more or less with partitions. One half is for the time machine of the Mac and the other half is used for the 500 gigabyte SSD and also a mirror of that. So this store this drive here is essentially a copy of my Mac and my external hard drive which is right here. So in total I'm traveling with six terabytes of data but I only use three terabytes because the rest is identical copies of the other stuff and that's because I really hate losing my data. I had that happen a couple of times. I had it happen in a project where I lost almost all the work I already did it really is painful and you don't want that to happen so by now I changed my mind. If I buy a hard drive I buy two of them or I find some way where I can copy the drive so I never lose my active data. I have to say these are only my travel drives, they are really small, I have 3 terabytes of usable data storage and at home I have more drives which are bigger and for archive purposes. So, so when I come home I copy all the project stuff that is done to the archive drives which are stored in two different locations, again duplicating my stuff and if one house burns down and I hope it never will, but if one house burns down I have my files in a second. Before I go into details on how I use the programs I just mentioned in terms of copying files around, I want to share with you how I would purchase my drives right now if I would have to set up the first time. As you've seen I have two 2 terabyte drives and I have one 1 terabyte drive and I then have the one 500 gigabyte SSD drive and the Mac obviously has 500 gigabytes as well. This has grown over the last couple of years. I started out with one terabyte drives, two of these and synchronized those, then I upgraded to two, two terabyte drives and then just last year I bought the 500 gigabyte SSD and I always found a way to kind of mirror them and have duplications and that would still leave room for an improved or a bigger Mac. In this ideal scenario I would have kind of like these but four terabytes on each of these those two mirrored to another. In addition to those four terabytes mirrored I would have a third of these and a two terabyte SSD drive which essentially gets mirrored onto the four terabyte drive and the other half would be then again used for the time machine on the Mac. So in total that would leave me with six and a half terabytes of usable space and another eight terabytes in terms of backup storage. So that would leave me room for a bigger Mac which I'm planning to get at some point. The 500 gigabytes in the Mac actually would be more like two terabytes again as well. 
so I would have 8 terabytes with me wherever I go. But obviously this 8 terabyte setup would be quite expensive. I looked it up on Amazon and in Europe or in Germany I would come to around 1110 euros and in the United States on Amazon it would cost around 1240 euros. If you're interested in buying something that is similar to my solution and it's almost half the price, I found some set that would cost around 427 euros and in the US it would cost around 467 dollars. I also put some Amazon links in the description below. Little disclaimer, those are affiliate links and if you buy something off there I will get a small commission. If you don't or if you decide to search it for yourself and somewhere else, please feel free to do so. If you buy through my link it will help me to produce more videos like this. Now let's switch to the computer and I will show you how I use Time Machine, how I set up the partitions on the drive that does the Time Machine and the SSD and how I use Carbon Copy Cleaner to duplicate my drives. As you can see Apple actually has a support file which is about the Time Machine and I have the link to this support file in the description below and you can read it for yourself to learn more about Time Machine. But for me it was important to first partition my drive because I have a one terabyte drive and my Mac is 500 gigabytes and my external drive is another 500 gigabytes. So basically I need two 500 gigabyte partitions to actually get both of them onto this one drive. The main reason for that is with time, the time machine backup actually will fill up the full terabyte of storage because it actually keeps versions of everything. And that way, even if your Mac internally has only 500 gigabytes or even 250, with time, the full terabyte will be used because changed files will be kept on the drive. So I limit it to 500 gigabytes so I still have the second 500 gigabytes for my other drive. To do something like that you have to go into the disk utility and here you can see that I have my Mac OS internal drive, then I have the mini drive which is my SD card reader drive, then there's the external drives. And here you have the 500 gigabyte SSD drive and here there is the one terabyte drive that is divided in two drives. My naming convention for external drives as you can see is pretty simple. I always mark the physical size in the front which is in this case 2.5 inches and here you have 1.8 inches. Then I number the drive so I have a continuous flow and if I get a new drive in the same size I will just number it again. And then I have the size the drive actually has in gigabytes or terabytes. After that sometimes I also put some naming. In this case it is TM which is Time Machine and, and here you have MO which stands for Miro Off and then the name of the other drive. And with the SSD I put external SSD because this is the fastest drive I have. I wanted to make that clear for myself that I don't get confused. The main thing to keep in mind with partitioning a drive is that you should do that before you start using it. So ideally you buy it and then you instantly partition it and then you start using it because if you don't do that you have a problem later partitioning it and then sorting out stuff, moving it to other drives to form it again and stuff like that. So the best thing to do is just buy the drive, plug it into your computer, make sure you actually have the right drive selected. Ideally disconnect all of the drives from your computer and only have the one drive that you want to format because it happened to me once where I had a music library completely wiped out just because I formatted the wrong drive. So keep that in mind and really look what you're formatting. We want to partition this drive or at least show how you would go about that and you do that by selecting the drive, go to partition and then you can select which side you want to have which size. Normally you just see one of these circles and then you have to press this little plus and then it will create a new partition. In this case it created a 29 gigabyte partition because that's the only storage that is left on this drive right now. So if you would have a completely new drive you would be able to kind of move that around and have that to 50-50. But 50-50 sometimes is not really ideal. It is best to keep a little bit more storage than you actually have to back up. So in my case I gave the external SSD 510 gigabytes or 509 gigabytes because for me that's more important that that actually gets completely stored and the internal Mac most of the time I don't use the full 500 gigabytes. I still have room there so I just gave it 490. Then you hit apply and it will do that for you. Then you have two drives and the one annoying thing with that is that if you remove the files and I have them here on the desktop, if you remove them you will actually have to select both of these and then eject them before removing that. But as well if you eject one of them it will actually warn you that there are more partitions and you can just click eject all 
right there. So the partitions are set up and now we can look into the time machine settings. To get into the time machine settings you have two ways. For one if you use Alfred then you can just hit enter and type time machine and it will show you the time machine pref pane and then you can just launch that and it will instantly take you to those settings. If you're not using Alfred and you still want to use the, uh, the spotlight which is also command and spacebar you can just search for system preferences and then hit enter and right there you can either type time machine up in the search or you can select it from here and it click and then you are in the time machine settings. Here you can see that I have selected the 25.3 one terabyte TM drive as my time machine and right now there are only 28.8 gigabytes left but as the time machine runs and it does a new backup it will actually start deleting old stuff so it has room for the new stuff. So you always have what you have on your computer on your external drive as well but old backups will be removed and you can see here oldest backup for me would be from the 21st of November 2016 and it has all the changes I made in between those steps. So the last backup for me was 18th 2017. I actually tried to do a backup a couple days ago but it didn't completely run through. As mentioned in the beginning of the video I try to do my backups once a week at least and I have a reminder set so I actually do remember. If you don't have Time Machine set up already here you will probably find something in the terms of explaining what Time Machine does and then you can select the drive. And Mac OS is actually quite interested in your data safety. You might have noticed that when you connect a new drive it, you will actually get asked if you want to use that drive as a time machine. Probably you said no but for now get here select the disk you want to use the partition we just created and then you're basically good to go and, and time machine will automatically run when you connect this drive to your computer. A couple things to note here is you want to have that set up to automatically back up or not so if you have that it will automatically start backing up at certain times. For me in general it doesn't really work with the automatic backup because it's an external hard drive and I purposefully connect it to do my backups, I do go up here and just say backup now. The time machine also offers a couple of options down here which are mainly to exclude external hard drives from the backup and also say if the computer should back up while on battery power. For the time machine I think back up while on battery power actually makes a lot of sense because I purposefully connect the drive when I want to do a backup and it should do it even though I'm not connected to a power outlet. With another program I use for cloud backup I actually don't want to run it while on battery power because it's always running in the background and I want that just to run when I'm plugged into a power outlet because otherwise it would drain my battery faster and it doesn't really need to do that because it's always backing up anyways. So that's it with Time Machine. On to the Carbon Copy Cleaner. This covers all the internal stuff your computer has stored on his own solid stage drive. Now how do you manage the external drives? And that's where a Carbon Copy Cleaner comes in. And I have a link to this tool in the description below. I really like it. I have bought it a couple years ago and I use it almost every week when I do my backups. It is a rock solid solution. There are alternatives and I have a link in the description below to a free alternative which is hosted here on GitHub. This tool is actually quite cool. It is an interface for rsync which is a great tool to copy files from A to B and have them synchronize folders and stuff. It is however not as solid of a solution as Carbon Copy Cleaner but I think backups are actually a topic where a company like Bombish with experience and a well-developed tool come in and I really really want my backups to be well done so I actually prefer to use this. But if you don't want to spend the dollars on this tool I can recommend the rsync OS X and just get started with backups. It's much much better than having nothing. When you just when you decide to go into the free trial you will have to download it and then install it on your computer and then you have a tool that looks something like this. What you can do with Carbon Copy Cleaner is basically you have tasks which you build on the left side and then you say what should happen in that task. I essentially have two tasks. For one I have the 25.5 2 terabyte drives which are the two 2 terabyte drives that I I want to mirror to each other and then I want to have the SSD drive backed up as well so I have that as my second task and what I do 
And I have the tasks set up in a way where it actually backs up the full drive completely from the source here, the external SSD. And as the destination of the backup, I actually created a folder on the mirror drive. The reason why I don't just mirror the drive to the other partition or the other drive is because the folder name actually tells me what is getting backed up there. So the folder in this case is called full backup of and then the name of the hard drive. Other settings you can do here is you can exclude files. You can have the safety net, which I absolutely recommend, which essentially means that files you delete on the source will still be on the destination for a certain time. And you can say here how much free space you want to still keep before starting to delete safety net files. And then at the end, you have the email notifications and the schedule. For me, the scheduling doesn't really make sense because I'm running external hard drives and they are not always connected to the computer. So scheduling those would actually not make a lot of sense. And the email notifications also don't really make sense because Carbon Copy Cleaner actually sends a system notification so I see if the backup failed or finished successfully anyways. One last thing that I actually have is a shell script set up here. And this script essentially runs after completing the run. And for me, this task only attaches a new timestamp to a file on the source and the destination, basically telling me how the backup went and when it last ran. So I actually know when I did run the last backup and it was successful. So these are the settings I do for this particular clone. The other clone for the other drive is actually just the same thing. The safety net is on. I want to have all the files and I run the script at the end. That's all, I just hit clone at the end. And as you see here, those drives are currently not connected. That's why it's actually showing these error messages. But if I would have them, I can just hit clone and then it does that for me. One thing you might notice on the external SSD is that the last run actually was on March 27th at 1252. And it has an error on the toolbar here. And that is one thing that I particularly like about this tool. It does more than just cloning your drives. It actually shows you if there are problems with your drive and you can then in inspect them. I have actually looked into this error message and it means that my destination drive has some kind of error. Right now I'm still trusting it, but that will probably not hold longer and then I will upgrade to a new drive. So this is my travel data storage backup solution. I use Time Machine and Carbon Copy Cleaner and I have approximately three terabytes worth of data storage. Please leave a comment down below if you need any help or want to have more details. Also, let me know what kind of travel backup solution you are running. And if you found this video helpful, please tell your friends, like it and subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. Also, connect with me on my social media channels, especially on Instagram where I share more photos. And that's also why I have all those hard drives to store the photos and the videos. I will see you in the next video. Until then, have a nice day. Bye.